and go up there and find out what the you know what's up there if there's anything. Which and is going to be a slow process because you're just kind of stabbing the earth, I guess, yeah. with your knife. Huh? Well, that was at night, and of course uh, I was hoping to get up there before the sun was to my back, and I got oh I'd say from here over to the to the church there about uh, 40 feet, and uh, uh, I could see you know where the gun ports were, and they had a 30. A seven millimeter and a tank gun on the on the right side, and I made mental note of that, and and I thought, well, while I'm there, I'll just throw a hand grenade over the <laughs> over the blockade, and when I reached to get the the hand grenade, why, well, um, the guy says you've had enough over there, and I, of course I was silhouetted from the sun. Did you stand he, up to throw it? No, I was uh, on my knees, and I was. Uh, so you're like, about to. Pitch a hand grenade over this yeah. barricade that the Germans were behind, and I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean. To, and what happened? What did the German do? Well, he raised up with a pistol. Uh, it, it appeared to be a pistol because I could just see, uh, you know, a hand. I didn't see a long, like a rifle or anything, and and he shot me through the shoulder. Uh, and were you able to crawl back to your, or did everyone well, open up uh, on them run? Uh, I didn't realize that until I felt something. Oh my! Something, something warm's on my hand, and it was red. You know. You mean you hadn't even realized you'd been shot? <laughs> no. Uh, the, you know, I heard the the when the bullet came, it it makes a bang. You know, because uh, uh, of it traveling through the air, and uh, not until oh I started back, and when I tried to move my arm, that I my arm got stiff, and well and then I crawl back into the woods and then I uh, crawl back you know and got up and in, in a crouch position and run back and told the, uh, the officers what what I had found and and uh, you know there's a 30 millimeter 37 millimeter anti-tank gun off two foot up about three foot over and give them all the information and uh, uh, they went and uh, put me on a jeep and took me back to the uh, field hospital and they bandaged up the best they could. In fact, the bullet went in here and came out back here, so they had two bandages, and then they wrapped my arm around and and uh, took me to the uh, uh, autobahn where uh, they had uh, uh, C-47 transports, and they were loading all of the wounded on the uh, on the planes. So we went down the autobahn, went back to Reims, France, the 50th General Hospital, and that's where I got sewed up. Years later, uh, in fact, I guess it was 2001, you went back to Germany uh, with your wife, as I understand it. No. No? No. You, who, Not you? me. Oh, okay. I, 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 I apologize. <laughs> have you gone, let me ask, did you go back to, uh, have you gone back to Europe since then? No, I have no, uh, uh, I just have no reason to go back. What are your thoughts uh, when you're in combat like that? And then right after the war, we, we had the Germans then become our allies against the Soviet Union in the Cold War. I mean, um, but for those who had to be in combat and saw, the, you know, were shooting, being shot. Uh, well, the Germans, I think, as a whole, uh, uh, were forced to go along with Hitler's, uh, uh, you know, what... What he had in mind in his book Mein Kampf, you know, my struggle, uh, was not what he wound up wanting to. Well, it's so easy to take Poland. Why not take uh, uh, other uh, Sweden and and France? And uh, you know, let's just don't stop. Let's run the whole world. And I think he just went off his rocker. So the war ended for you, as far as then uh, after you were shot. Well, I can't. Uh, our, I went back to uh, uh, my division at Pilsen, Czechoslovakia, which uh, they were uh, uh, re deactivating uh, uh, the 12th Panzer Division. And uh, after that was done, uh, and when I went back, I still had my arm in the sling because they needed the bed space, and I was what they called ambulatory. I could walk, so they said, get out of here. So they were quite surprised to see me back, you know, with my arm in a sling, and I couldn't really do much. 
But uh, I had my arm in a sling uh, even on the ship when we come back to to the United States, and and uh, we were to go to Camp Swift, Texas, and uh, uh, get ready with the I think the second and fifth Marine Division to land on the island of Japan, and uh, they actually took me out of C Company, which was the rifle company, and put me in headquarters company because I still couldn't didn't have full use of my uh, right arm, and I, I don't have that right, you know, even now, but uh, they didn't know what to do with me. <laughs> they couldn't let me go because I could walk. So again, uh, the, 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 while today we know the, the atom bomb went off and the war ended in August, uh, the, the fact of the matter is, um, before that happened, before the uh, atom bombs were dropped, uh, everyone was preparing then for the invasion of Japan. Yes. Uh, we, uh, when we got back to the United States, uh, uh, when we got off the ship, we were allowed two weeks home, uh, and then we were to uh, go to Camp Swift, Texas, to, to uh, you know, learn what we're going to do when we get over to Japan. And when I was home on leave, I uh, thank goodness that uh, Harry Truman dropped the bomb, and I, I thank him for my life for today. What did you think when you heard that? I mean, obviously no one had knew that it was coming beforehand. How, do you remember how you heard the news of the atomic bomb? Well, it, uh, uh, we didn't know whether it was going to make them uh, surrender or not. So we thought, well, that's better than, than uh, uh, sending individual planes over, you know, to drop uh, dozens of uh, regular 500 pounds or 200 pounds or whatever. Uh, scattered bombs, and uh, with the devastation that, that they made at, at the two Hiroshima and, and Nagasaki, why, uh, we said, you know, just keep it up till they give up. And uh, of course, after the second one, they that's uh, they gave up. And uh, I was in my hometown of Jacksonville when when uh, they gave up, and they said, uh, you know that. Uh, over the radio for all of those that were on on leave to report back to their camps for deactivation. And I had enough points. They give you points for for time overseas and for the medals that you got, the combat infantry badge and Purple Heart and Bronze Star and like that. So uh, I got out uh, in October and uh, uh, filed to go to college. <laughs> 